Now the other reason why hydrogen gas is, is so good for you is because it's selective. As we just barely talked about, the fact that we need some of these free radicals or reactive oxygen species. We don't want to neutralize all of them. J just a quick example, nitric oxide, for example. That's a free radical, but very important for vasodilation. That's what nitroglycerin uh, does. It increases the nitric oxide or Viagra or, other, or many other things. is all about nitric oxide, which is a free radical. We don't want to neutralize that. Hydrogen gas has been shown to be a selective antioxidant in that it only neutralizes the most cytotoxic or cell damaging radicals such as the hydroxyl radical OH neutral. And what, what happens, these hydroxyl radicals, they, they don't really, they're not really involved in, in cell signaling and different things. They just neutralize themselves by damaging our DNA and our proteins and our cell membranes and cause a lot of cytotoxic damage. They can be produced when there's an excess of things like superoxide radicals and they go through the Fenton reaction to produce hydroxyl radicals. And they, when they get too high, they cause a lot of damage. Hydrogen gas, being so bioavailable, is able to enter into the cells in the mitochondria and it will neutralize those hydroxyl radicals, converting them to water. Because if you consider uh, hydrogen is two hydrogen atoms, so one hydrogen molecule has two hydrogen atoms, and that can neutralize two, or two hydroxyl radicals therefore producing two wa molecules of water. So that's the byproduct of simply water. And that's really a third benefit of hydrogen gas and you can compare it to other antioxidants that there's no toxic byproduct. The byproduct is simply water. Because if you have something say like vitamin C, if vitamin C donates those electrons, then now vitamin C doesn't have those electrons anymore, so the body has to do something with that. It has to rejuvenate it using maybe NADPH equivalents or glutathione or other things. It has to, it has to clear it or metabolize it to do something. Versus with hydrogen gas, when it scavenges the hydroxyl radical, the byproduct is simply water. So we have high bioavailability. We have its selectivity. And the other beneficial thing that we have is uh, hydrogen gas is able to actually help maintain our body's own antioxidants. Because as I mentioned earlier, life is balanced between oxidation and reduction. And so we have lots of ox oxidative species that occur because we're breathing oxygen. In fact, 2 to 4 percent of all the oxygen we breathe may actually turn into these uh, free radicals and reactive oxygen species. So we have oxidation and then our body ha actually has the mechanisms to help neutralize these free radicals. So you've heard of things maybe like glutathione or superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase, and a number of other enzymes and peptides that are important antioxidants in our body. Th these are produced via our genes, and there's a transcription factor called the, the NERF2 or NRF2 pathway. And some of these studies are actually showing that hydrogen gas offers its cytoprotective effect in lowering oxidative stress by activating this NRF2 pathway and when it does so, it can lead to higher levels of glutathione, a superoxide mutase, catalase, and subsequent induction of heme one oxygenase, which is also very cytoprotective. So hydrogen gas being able to do this is, is very powerful for, for our cells. And the fact that it doesn't necessarily increase our glutathione levels or other antioxidant levels above a normal homeostasis, because again, life is balanced between this oxidation and reduction. So just as you can have oxidative stress, you could also have reductive stress. You could have too, too much of that reductive. So you don't want too high levels of different antioxidants. Similar for the reason that when you look at the clinical studies on in taking high levels of exogen, exogenous or, or supplemental pill antioxidants, uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, or different things, they're very high levels when you take them and you look at the clinical studies, they actually show often deleterious side effects. In fact, that incre may increase the mortality or death and increase risks of cancer or other cardiovascular disease issues. And that may be because you're perturbing redox homeostasis. And so again, because hydrogen gas is selective and that's only going to scavenge the most toxic radicals, and it's going to help maintain our body's own endogenous antioxidant self-defense self system um, by maybe helping increase or maintain those normal glutathione levels that could be decreased by various environmental toxins or pesticides or things of this nature. So one other reason that hydrogen gas is able to help decrease this excessive oxidative stress is it's actually via more of a cell modulating property, if you will. In, in, in our cells, we have different complexes, like there's a NOx complex or NADPH oxidase, which can produce cytotoxic radicals. For, for example, this NADPH oxidase complex, when it's activated, it donates an electron to oxygen, forming a superoxide anion radical, which in turn can produce hydroxyl radicals, hydroperoxide, and a number of other things, which can be toxic for our, for our body. 
So when this is very activated like that, 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 can, that can lead to oxidative stress and oxidative damage, and that can occur via in various disease conditions, high inflammation, and a number of other things, even toxins. Hydrogen gas can actually, in some of these studies, have been shown to actually downregulate this NADPH, NADPH oxidase system, thus leading to lower levels of the superoxide formation in these compartments, and therefore a, a decrease in oxidative stress. And so when you look at the, the human studies and animal studies and even cell studies, you'll notice the markers of oxidative stress are lower, like MDA, T-bars, um, AOHDG, which is the marker of DNA damage, and, and a number of other things, as well as an improved antioxidant status. So again, if you were to compare how hydrogen gas compares to other antioxidants, it's really these primary mechanisms of the fact that it's highly bi bioavailable, it's very selective, there's really no byproduct, uh, it's going to help maintain our body's own endogenous antioxidant self-defense system, and it has a cell modulating property to even prevent the formation of these toxic free radicals in the first place.